Are you serious? Are you serious? The Ayatollah Allah Khomeini, the supreme spiritual leader of the nation of Iran, whose eschatology, whose ideology, whose theology is ultimately destruction of Jerusalem and or the nation of Israel. He literally speaks the very words of Psalms chapter 3 that I'll read to you in just a moment. But first of all, I want to share with you a little bit about what this great man, this great spiritual man, the great leader of, of the 25 or 30 million Iranians, what he's doing to his own people. Do you really want Sharia law? Do you really want to build a relationship? Do you really want to trust a person who does this to their own people to build an alliance with you? Do you trust him when it comes to inspection of nuclear weapons? Uh, I'm going to share with you how he has acquired such a massive empire of wealth. But here's what he says, and he might as well read it from the Bible. He, in, in Psalms chapter 83, the Lord says, uh, David wrote, Keep not thou silence, O God, and hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies have made a turmoil, a crying. They that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. Now, <clears throat> there's an article out by Reuters this morning, it came out yesterday. <clears throat> Can I have some coffee? In which the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini is, controls massive financial empire built on property seizures in his own nation. Here is the Ayatollah Allah Khomeini. If you might want to get a very close close look at him. Now, he is getting ill in health, and there is nobody in line for the replacement of him. He is their supreme spiritual leader. Now, Reuters' investigation details a key to the supreme leader's power. A little-known organization created to help the poor has morphed into a business juggernaut worth tens of billions of dollars. The 82-year-old Iranian woman keeps the documents that upended her life in an old suitcase near her bed. She removes them carefully and peers at the tiny Persian script that she received. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got real dry today. It's snowing here in Indiana even. Um, she removes them carefully and peers at the tiny Persian script. There's the court order authorizing the takeover of her children's three Tehran Iranian apartments in a multi-story building. The family has owned this building for years. There's the letter announcing the sale of one of those units. And there's the notice demanding that she pay rent on her own apartment on the top floor. Now, ultimately, she lost her property. It was taken by the organization that is controlled by the most powerful man in Iran. Supreme Leader, the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini. She now lives alone in a cramped three-room apartment in Europe, thousands of miles from Iran. The Persian name of the organization that hounded her for years is Sitad Iyeva Famin Hazrat Imam. I'm not saying it twice. No, what, no matter what you ask, I'm not. Uh, the headquarters for executing the order of the imam. That is what. That is who they are. Okay. The name refers to an, an edict 
uh, signed by the Islamic Republic's first leader, the Ayatollah Rahola Khomeini, shortly before his death in 1989. His order spawned a new entity to manage and sell properties abandoned in the chaotic years after the 1979 Islamic Revolution. But she had become, she has become, uh, she was still there. She still owned her own building. It hadn't been abandoned. She still lived on top floor. She was still managing the apartments of people who were renting from her. Uh, CTAD, we'll call this organization, has become one of the most powerful organizations in Iran. Though many Iranians and the wider world know very little about it. In the past six years, it has morphed into a business juggernaut that now holds stakes in nearly every sector of the Iranian industry, including the finances, oil, telecommunications, and the production of birth control pills, and even ostrich farms. What? What? The organization's total worth is difficult to pinpoint because of the secrecy of its accounts, but CTAD's holdings of real estate, corporate stakes, and other assets total $95 billion, Reuters is calculating. This estimate is based on analysis of statements by CTAD officials. That's just what they want. That's only what they're letting the American U.S. Treasury know they have. Double it, triple it is probably more reasonable. Just one person controls the entire economic empire of Iran, and that is the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini. As Iran's top cleric, he has the final say on all governmental matters. His purview includes his nation's controversial nuclear program, which was the subject. So why isn't he in the negotiations? Because ultimately what he says goes. And it don't matter what these people negotiate, ultimately what he says goes. Okay? Which was the subject of intense negotiations between Iranians and the international diplomats in Geneva, which ended just this past Sunday. They have no agreement. Why? Well, part of it is because Khomeini, who will set Iran's course in the nuclear talks and other recent efforts by the new president, Hassan Rouhani to improve the relations with Washington. So the Supreme Leader praises his Spartan lifestyle and points to his modest wardrobe and a threadbare carpet in Tehran's home. Reuters found no evidence that Khomeini is tapping CTAD to enrich himself, but CTAD has empowered him. It's not that he's living in this magnificent, you know, $30 million mansion and, and, and with servants. Uh, it, it, he does have everything he needs, believe me. But his, his whole reasoning for doing this is to amass power. Power that can give him the authority to not only shove the Iranian people around and keep them where they need to be, but to also have a powerful force when dealing with other national leaders. CTAD came into those assets, also mirrors how the deposed monarchy obtained much of its fortune, by confiscating real estate. You know what it's called in America? It's called eminent domain. And it actually started, really, really started under George W. Bush. It's when it was passed by Congress and he signed it. Eminent domain means the United States government can seize anybody's property if it needs it and give you what they think it's worth which will be, of course, a dime on a dollar. It's going on already. You just don't hear about it because those who open their mouth are probably either A, in prison for other charges, or B, threatened with prison if they open their mouth. Okay? This is what goes on in governments. And uh, we have corruption now taking place everywhere. So in Iran, the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini he could care. Look, he's not about his people. It's about uh, the, this, the spreading of radical Islam. It's all about the spreading of radical Islam. This is what they want. Destroy Israel. 
seize the holy city. They don't really want to destroy the city of Jerusalem. They want to stop the government of Israel from existing, and they want to rule Jerusalem. It's always been about empires ruling Jerusalem. Are you saved? I'll be right back with a powerful video on the third temple and the, and the breaking news about it just coming forth and how that relates to Bible prophecy, including, of course, Iran, as they continue their Jerusalem Jihad. That's why my new book, it's available at my website. Check it out, Jerusalem Jihad. It will help you understand why uh, Israel is being eyed and pursued by the nations and the governments of the world, and why Zechariah said, don't worry, it won't fall. God's got Israel's back.